liver is a solid organ that sits in the right side of your tummy, underneath your ribs. And from the liver comes a tiny little tube called the bile duct that carries the bile from the liver to your gut to help digest the food. And the gallbladder is a little bag the size of a pear that hangs off this bile tube and it stores a little bit of bile. And every time food arrives in your gut after being digested in the stomach, the gallbladder gives a little squeeze and a gush of bile goes and mixes with the food. So that's the gallbladder's job. Now, if your bile is particularly concentrated, it can form a sediment in the gallbladder. And over a period of time, that can form stones, which are called gallstones. Now, in the majority of patients or majority of people, gallstones do not cause any symptoms at all. They're completely silent and picked up by chance. And such gallstones can be left alone. You don't have to have them removed surgically unless there are certain extenuating circumstances. It is only when they start causing symptoms that you have to worry about gallstones. And the symptoms they can cause are, in milder situations, pain, which doctors describe as biliary colic. And typically this is pain that comes on after a meal, um, especially a fatty meal, and often uh, strikes you in the middle of the tummy in the upper part, and very often goes around towards the back, towards the right shoulder blade. It is often associated with vomiting, can be quite severe. People land up in accident and emergency with this sort of pain sometimes and end up having tests done to exclude a heart attack. It's often ascribed to acid reflux as well. If the gallbladder gets completely blocked, the stone doesn't allow bile to come out of the gallbladder and it's full of stagnant bile, then that can get infected and lead to what's called acute cholecystitis or acute inflammation of the gallbladder. And this can be very painful. It almost always requires hospitalization and more tests, antibiotics, and then surgery. So that's a nasty complication. Gallstones can also slip into the bile duct. And if they do that, then they can block the flow of bile and give you jaundice or they may irritate the pancreas, which also drains into the same duct just before it goes into the gut and give you pancreatitis, which is another nasty complication. So this is the acute scenario. And occasionally people get what's called chronic cholecystitis or chronic inflammation of the gallbladder, where they keep getting pain, usually after eating, almost on a daily basis. So that's called chronic cholecystitis. The the test we do to identify gallstones is an ultrasound scan of the abdomen. It's straightforward, painless, doesn't involve any radiation and widely available. Only occasionally do we need other scans like an MRI, which is called an MRCP. And very rarely, if you, if you are suspected to have stones in your bile duct, you might need what's called an ERCP, which is an endoscopic procedure. So, if you do have gallstones that are causing trouble, there isn't any medical therapy that will really dissolve those stones for you. Blasting the stones with shockwave lithotripsy or sound waves doesn't really work because the sand will just go and clog the bile tube. Surgically removing only the stones but leaving the gallbladder again doesn't make sense because they'll form again. So the only practical solution is to remove the gallbladder surgically. So this operation is called a laparoscopic cholecystectomy, which means keyhole surgery to remove the gallbladder. It's always done under a general anesthetic and involves three or four little cuts to the abdomen and the gallbladder is removed uh, by the keyhole approach. Very occasionally, one might have to do an open operation where you get a longer cut underneath the ribs on the right side, and that removes the gallbladder. What's done inside is the same, but you have a bigger flesh wound, so the recovery period is longer. The operation is done as a day case, 
uh, in most instances. So you might go home the same evening or the following morning after the keyhole operation. Recovery takes a variable period of time in different people, but most patients who are at desk jobs are back at work within one to two weeks. If you have a more physical job, it might take a bit longer. Interestingly, if you don't have a gallbladder, it doesn't seem to make too much of a difference to your digestive processes. There's no particular diet or dietary restrictions that you have to follow if you don't have a gallbladder. You just eat and drink as normal. The liver still makes the same amount of bile and that flows down drip, drip, drip into the gut and the gut adapts to that. You don't get a gush of bile going and mixing with the food every time it comes along, but the bowel just adjusts to that. The concerns are all to do with the immediate aftermath of the operation. One worries about bleeding, infection, inadvertent damage to something else at the time of the operation. And all those risks are exceedingly low. By and large, it's a very safe standard operation that's done very widely across the country in many hospitals by many surgeons. And the overwhelming majority of patients just get back to a normal life and forget that they ever had a problem with their gallbladder. <music>